Hello, welcome to Painting with the Scientist. I'm Math Dad, and I'm pretty excited for this. I see Deepa, PPC Builders, Queen Donut, Science Mom Amber, Fluff Plays, Crazy Boy, Kari, Science Mom Jamie. So good. I'm so glad you've joined me. Last time we had some some good times. Uh, it, it's it's always fun to see what what you can draw, what you can't draw, and you know some. Sometimes I think most of the time, what what we do, it, we kind of fail at it. We 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 are trying to to create this masterpiece, and, and it just doesn't work. And you know, there's there's joy in the journey. Oh, I just found the protractor that I was missing all through. I was trying to use for my inclinometer in the live stream. We just barely did, and here it was this entire time. So I'm grabbing my stylus getting set up so that we can do some more math art, some math doodles. And here we are. Once again, it's just a grid of dots. And we're going to have some fun with this. I uh, see Vivian's singing the song, and I uh, really appreciate that you guys like my song, or that you don't like it. <laughs> Whatever, it's, it's, it's been fun. Um, Yep, so several people in the chat are saying hi. I'm glad you were here. And oh, you guys like like me in the wig? You know, I, I'm a little self-conscious about losing all my hair. So maybe I should go with this full time. This this blue wig. <laughs> all right. So where can one get the printout? So in Patreon, you can find this this printout. So that in into today's show notes the one of the, the three available printouts is just this dots this grid of dots and in fact if you just did a quick google search like hey printable grid of dots and you'll, you'll find some options things you can print off and if you get really desperate you can always draw your own dots although there's something nice about having them so uniformly spaced it yeah it, it makes life very easy and, and doable. So, oh, not enough storage, says my device. I don't care about iCloud. All right, we are gonna start off by just drawing some C's and S's. So the letters of the alphabet, C's and S's. And so just like last time, I'm hoping you, you guys hold off for just a moment and I want you to watch me draw a few things. So I'm just gonna start here. I can either draw so that the letter C, I've, I've drawn it so that it hooks around those two points. And I can do the same thing again, or I can switch the direction. And what, what we're seeing, they look kind of like parentheses and yeah, not perfect, but yeah, so the, those are C's. But we could also do S's. So I could do S, and then S, or I could do a backwards S. On a, a violin, they're similar looking marks. All right. And those are actually the building blocks. Those are what we're gonna do for this entire session. We're just gonna do a bunch of C's and S's, but we're gonna try to be strategic about it in the, the way we fill things in. And I'm, I'm gonna erase all this in just a moment. So you're welcome to doodle if you want, although we're gonna quickly fill up this page if, if, if we do that. So what I want us to do is to fill this up in such a way that we are consistent with being, being clockwise or counterclockwise. So I'm actually gonna to attempt to zoom in here just a little further so we can see this. All right. So looking at this leftmost C, what you will notice is that I went around this top point. Uh, so it looks like we, we were wrapping in the clockwise direction. So that has already been established. This, so, or let's see, if I started up top, I would be unwrapping in the counterclockwise direction. Perhaps that's a, a better way of uh, describing it. So. Starting at the point, I unwrapped counterclockwise. Well, that means anything I do is going to have to unwrap in the counterclockwise direction. And similarly, if I look at this one next to it, it's also a counterclockwise one. 
I want to join those two points, but I want to do it in such a way that I follow the wrapping convention that was already displayed here. So in this case, I would need to do something of an S shape, then I come around and wrap from that direction. So I, I just made an S wrap. And on the bottom here, ooh, now we've got opposite direction we're wrapping. So I would unwrap and then I go around and wrap this way. So what we just saw was me drawing the S shapes to connect those dots. But I had to draw S's because I needed to follow the wrapping convention that I'd already drawn before. So, oops. Okay, so let, let, let's see. Here, I have, we would unwrap in the counterclockwise direction and also counterclockwise. So in this case, I would need a C shape. Down here, I need a C in the opposite direction. And then here, I would need, it looks like an S shape and the reverse S shape. And we're getting some, some kind of cool looking doodles already. We're gonna come back to this. And I'm, I'm still just, just laying the groundwork here so that there will be plenty of time for, for everyone to dive in. All right, over here, ooh, I need to unwrap in the counterclockwise direction, but then I wrap clockwise. Here, I unwrap counterclockwise and then, oops, wrap clockwise over here. It's like a C is good. Down here, also a C. Up here, though, we need an S and an S. And we've kind of got the, the reverse type of pattern. So just by using C's and S's, we were able to come up with some kind of cool looking patterns here. So th that's all we're gonna do. And eventually we might add something fancy at the end, and turn these into Celtic knots, but these are the building blocks. This is what we're going to work with. So that's my entire introduction. So if you've been patient and have refrained from drawing thus far, then I'm lifting that restriction. I'm gonna erase what I have here because I wanna, I wanna scroll over and make best possible use of the space here. All right, so I'm gonna start in the upper left-hand corner. And in truth, there's no wrong way to do this. Um, that some ways look prettier than others, but yeah, as, as long as you're having fun, you're good. And the several of these I kind of stumbled upon by messing around. So they're, they're not things that are gonna be terribly obvious whether it'll work or not from the get-go. All right. So what I thought I would start out off with first here, I'm gonna go for an all S's shape. So I'm going to see, what does this look like if I do all S's? So S, and I'm gonna do S's. I'm just gonna start heading down. And I'm not making, trying to make my S's terribly curvy. I could also probably draw them even straighter or I, if I were more adventurous, I could draw them even windier, but I'm, I'm just gonna stick with the, this way, how I usually draw them. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw these, the next column, the exact same way. Just having some fun here. The next column will also be S's and the next. And it's, yeah, we we don't know what it's going to look like. I'm, I'm trying to make a what will eventually become a four by four grid. Although to get a four by four kind of grid of squares, you actually have to use a five by five grid of dots. Okay, so now that I've created my vertical waves, I want to fill in the rest. But now I have to be careful and make sure that I'm following the same winding convention. So. Here, I unwrap in the counterclockwise direction and then wrap in the clockwise direction. So it looks like we need S shapes 
here to join these. Now, what happens if you don't follow the wrapping convention and you, you have one line coming in clockwise, one line coming in counterclockwise? It actually just, it just doesn't look very cool. So you always want to follow this wrapping convention for, for what we're doing today. But um, yeah, there's certainly no, no harm in trying things. But I was thoroughly unimpressed with my efforts to if, it, if I didn't follow the wrapping convention so that at each point, everything was going out clockwise or everything was going out counterclockwise. Yeah, you, you, I, don't, I don't think you can make it look nearly as cool. So more and more S's. And actually, in this case, every single shape is the identical S. So not a lot of variety in this one. And we're definitely seeing a pattern emerge here. Do I have a name for this shape? I don't know. They look like weird, wavy flags. But yeah, using all S's, and so this is the standard orientation of the S, we we get this cool grid. Let's try the Let's try reversing it. Let's switch the S's around so that they wrap the other direction. Oh man. <laughs> no, no idea what button I keep pushing to do that. Uh, no. Okay. So. What am I doing? Stop it. All right. In math, we use, uh, so in, in calculus, there's this, something called an integral sign. And the integral sign looks a lot like this elongated S. It's a notation that uh, Leibniz came up with. And it kind of comes from the German word for summa, so sum, summation because what the integral is doing is adding up a bunch of stuff, or kind of taking the limit of a bunch of sums. Mathematicians are always using Greek letters for things, so anytime we can, can get our standard Arabic alphabet in there, that's, that's kind of nice. All right, so in this case, all my orientations were flopped, so it looks like we're just going to end up with S shapes, Oops, come on. So in, in this case, everything is wrapping clockwise. So in, in some sense, of all the patterns we're going to do today, this is going to be the most boring. Just because it's so standardized, there's not a lot of variety going on. But yeah, kind of cool that just using a single shape, so the S's, that we are able to come up with this. And <laughs> it's like one of those illusions. It's like, it seems like it's leaning in one direction, although we we're using a square grid to draw all of this. So uh, on average, I think that they're positioned, they're perfectly centered. Yeah, but kind of some fun variation there. All right. Let's see what happens. So let's stick with S's, but instead of uh, what we did last time, let's try uh, varying it by switching the directions from one column to the next column. So I'm going to do a column of S's. But then the next column over, I'm going to switch the orientation of the S's. And then I'm going to switch back. And then switch back again. So already I can tell that this shape is going to have a different feel. And of, co of course, th there's no reason that you have to do one size over another size. But I, I kind of like going over five dots in each direction because that gives me a four by four grid of shapes. All right. 
So now we, we see these alternate squiggles and we need to fill in the rest, but we want to respect the, yeah, the rotation here. So it looks like here to connect these two top ones, I need to connect it with a C. Oh, and this one is also a C. Okay, so we got C's all the way down. When I get to the next column, I need C's, but the orientation is going to be reversed. So kind of looks like we're we're drawing stacking cups, maybe. But the orientation is switching as we go from one column to the next column. So a surprising amount of order comes out of this chaos. And all that we're doing here is just thinking, all right, I, I, I want to make C's and S's, and I want to wrap around my points in a certain direction. And as long as we're respecting that direction in which we're wrapping, we get a pretty darn cool effect. Yeah, yeah. I like that. So all the vertical lines ended up being S's, all the vertical connectors, and all the horizontal ones ended up being C's. And yeah, it's good kinds of alternate by column. Okay, so cool effect there. Let's try another one. All right, I'm gonna start with an S, and then, we haven't seen this yet, what happens if I start with an S, but then I move to a C, then do an S, and then a C. Ooh, so I just got all all of the possible shapes there, right? At S, C, S, C, and in, in all four orientations, the only ones we're, we're considering today. Uh -huh. Okay, so um, opposite an S, you usually want to do an S. Opposite a C, you usually want to do a C. You're gonna get cooler patterns that way. So let, let's try this where I just duplicate the exact column I had drawn before. So that means I'm going to do an S, C, S, and C. I'm gonna duplicate this all the way across, and we're hoping something cool comes out of this, although, of course, we don't know in advance. We're just seeing what are the possible combinations we can make. But I've, I've mentioned before that I Often during boring me meetings, I will doodle like this. And of course, if I can make the doodles mathematical, then it's like I'm doing my job. I'm a mathematician. I'm supposed to be doing this type of thing. And I, I never get in any trouble. Okay, so now that we've drawn the columns, we don't have any decisions left to make. All the rest is forced upon us. So up top here, it looks like I would need to do an S here to connect. I'll go ahead and do that across the whole top row because all of those are the same. All right, on bottom, okay, the exact same S needs to show up, so sideways S. Let's try that again. Ooh, now I need the reverse S. I need S's across that row, and then again, S's, all right. And then along the bottom, we need S's yet again, but we're switching back to the other orientation. Cool, all right, so what is going on here? We got both the, the, the flag, flag waving -y ones, but we also got the cups. So it's like we just combined the, the previous structures. We, we took all three of the structures that we had drawn before, and all three of them 
showed up here, except that the cups ended up sideways. Um, yeah, that, that, that was kind of cool that that worked out so well. All right, um, I'm gonna go just below that one so, so we can compare them. I'm going to try a uh, real similar shape. I'm going to do the same left column here. So S, C, reverse S and reverse C. Okay, but now I'm gonna do the mirror image. I'm going to do S, C, S, C. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the mirror image again. So S, C, S, and C. So <laughs> unlike real artists who are who <laughs> know what their their final product is supposed to look like? I'm I'm just drawing. I don't know what the outcome is going to be. Although I I have drawn these several times, so usually as I start, I was like, oh okay, that's what this one's going to look like. But it's just kind of an exploration. We're we're not we don't have an end goal that we're after. We're just trying to follow a set of rules and hoping that it leads us somewhere. Okay, yes, C. S and a C, and then one more time. S, C, S and C. All right. So what we're seeing there? Have we seen one like that before? I don't. I don't think we have. I think this is a new shape we've come up with. All right. So it looks like up top here to keep preserve orientation. I have to do a C, a C. Reverse the C, reverse the C, and oh, back to the original C. All right, so it looks like we're doing C shapes here. All right, still just wrapping. Lots of C shapes. Whoops. A little too big. It's okay. You can always just make your dot bigger. Pretend you did it on purpose. Wrapping C shapes. And all right. Uh, we got new shapes this time. We, we have the cups alternating, but we also see we've got these long, narrower ones. It looks kind of like over, under, over, under braiding. So that, that's that's kind of cool. That, that was one we had not yet seen. All right, I'm gonna move back to the right here. All right, we've been doing a lot of S's. Can we, let, let, let's, let's see if we do more C's, what's going to happen? So if I start with, oops, come on, C, C, C no. C. Oh no. Ah. And C. Okay, this time I'm going to. Well, I'm. I'm I don't know if we're going to end up with the shape we've already done before, but let's go ahead and try all the C's in one direction. Or had we had we seen? All right. C, 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 C. So we're making columns of nothing but C's here. I honestly don't know if we've seen this, uh, this one before. Hmm. All right, how do we fit those together? Ooh, we're gonna have to do S's. So along the top, do my S's. Oh, and then more S's. All right, so with this particular choice, it looks like, uh, oh man, we need a, a lot of 
S's to connect our points. And more S's. Okay, we get the alternating cups. Had we seen that one before? Yes, we actually had. The one directly above it worked out to be um, the same thing, but on its side. Okay, so we thought we were making something new and it turned out we weren't. All right, but th this one I think will work then. So I'm going to do a column of nothing but C's all the way down, but then I'm going to alternate. I'm going to yeah, do the reflection. So another column of C's all the way down. And then reflect the column yet again. Back to the original column. Oops. Okay. So we are going to get a shape we haven't seen yet, because now when we do the horizontal pieces, we're going to get a C, a C, a C, you know, all, all Cs. So we've actually managed, we'd seen shapes that were all Ss before. This one is all Cs all the way. And what you'll notice then is that this new shape, we kind of get that over under weaving type of shape. And okay, I, I think at this point in time, we have managed to draw each of the, the possible types. And one of the types we even did twice just with different orientation. Yeah, so lots of fun, but by all means, if you can come up with a new pattern that I haven't discovered yet, I'd, I'd love to see it. All right, so looking at the chat. Let us try something fancy. So I'm gonna see if I can zoom out here. Do I have enough room left to draw any further? No, that's, that's the end. Okay, um, rather than erase that, I'm just going to move to a new page. So, so sorry if you've run out of room and can't keep going, but I'm, I'm, I, I wanted to have a little bit more room to draw. All right, and I'll go ahead and zoom back in just a smidgen. All right, in this case, I'm going. We want to end up drawing a Celtic knot. That that's our goal. And to do it, I, I had to learn, and I, I failed multiple times in attempting to do this, even though I had uh, seen somebody else pull it off. So what we need to do is identify some points, but they're going to be, we're identifying a diagonal rectangle. So in this case, I'm going to, yeah, color some points in like this. Good, so there's a diagonal rectangle. And I'm gonna go ahead and just color all the points. And what's, what that's really doing is telling me I don't want to draw, or I don't wanna connect any other points. I only want to connect the points that are in my rectangle. Now, we're going to use what we just practiced, Cs. Only Cs are allowed in this drawing. Uh -huh. I'm not even sure what it would look like if you tried it with S's. I, I I doubt you could turn this into something, but yeah, it'd be worth worth trying at least once. All right, so I'm just gonna make C's and I'm gonna do those vertical chains of C's, just like the very last example we had done. C, 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 C. And now um, we're, we're going for that opposite pairing, so it's a mirror image of the column next to it. And yeah, I'm just going to, or, or you could think of me diagonally, you get the same shape. Uh, 
I have a back button. Most of you at home won't have that. Okay, so in, in this case, I've, I've done a, a small shape and I've connected all those points in my grid that I was able to. So let, let, let's try this now horizontally. If we're gonna connect using only C's, then there are no choices to be made. We just have to follow the construction rules we've already established. So drawing in every horizontal line I can get to, horizontal line, yeah, horizontal C that can be drawn. Okay, and now I've connected absolutely everything and what you're seeing here is that there were four arms left over but from those corner points that didn't really have multiple places to attach and what you're seeing is kind of a clockwise spin to it wait as i point that way camera goes the other direction so <laughs> clockwise um yeah you're, you're seeing these tentacles that are reaching out they're kind of going in a clockwise direction so from this point on we are going to go ahead and draw or we're going to start our next line, but we're not going to finish it. But it, it's it's going to swirl out along those, and it's going to hug this image. So I'm going to go all the way around. I'm going to draw a C, and it's going to spin out and kind of hug the body. But I'm not actually going to finish the line. I'm just going to start each one. And... That's because we're about to get fancy. So I'm just starting each line. And okay, so in some sense, I've, I've continued my tentacles and gone in that clockwise direction. All right, now we, we have to get tricky to make our Celtic knots. So we're going to follow where these lines would go and so I'm starting at the top end here. This one needs to actually wrap around. And then when it hits the new line, it's going to take over. So wrap around until I hit the new line. New line takes over, wraps around. And what we're seeing here is a shape that's often called a Celtic knot. And voila, we have finished our very first Celtic knot. And yeah, I, I think it's a, a really pleasing shape to see. I didn't uh, make these dots huge. If you make the dots bigger, you get even thinner lines. But also, I, I did make them bigger than the initial dots. So if, if I wanted my lines to be thicker, then I, I could do that. I kind of like the size they ended up at. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful pattern. And if you ask me to sit down and just draw this from scratch without all the legwork that we had done, I'm fairly positive I, I could not do it. I wouldn't know where, what should go under what or over which. And yeah, I'd, I, th I think I would get, get a little confused. Come um, yeah, he, somebody said they can hear my kids. Yeah, they're working in the backyard. Science mom has them out there trying to do some yard work. We've got to do it now because the heat's coming. Okay, so th th this was fun. Let, let, let's let's try another one. I I like this. So if we'll try one of a different dimension this time. So I'm going to one, two, three. <laughs> Don't do it. No. Every time I change my grip just subtly, I, I anger the pen. All right, I'm gonna try doing a four by four this time. So I'm starting off by plotting, or marking these points a little bit bigger than they were, and that gives us this diagonal grid and yeah, if we don't mark these points, then you have to just pay a lot of attention. And I'm pretty sure I would mess up if I, if I didn't actually draw those in advance. Okay, up next, we're gonna do the C's. 
And so last time I started at the very top with a C that was yeah, concaved out to the left. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the orientation just because I can. So I'm starting to the right. And th th this will have some implications later, as we, we, we'll see. But now I'm just filling in this whole grid using our pattern of Cs that we've been practicing. So. I could start this this whole top row is or the top level is nothing but C's opening to the left. And then we alternate all the way down. Oops, C's. And if you mess up, yeah, it happens. I messed up several times learning how to do this. And I'll tell you, just a week ago, I didn't know how to do the Celtic knots part. I've been doodling with S's and C's for quite a while, but I didn't know how to turn them into a knot. But some somebody else did, and I just watched their tutorial. So C's are now horizontal. Down. Yeah, gotta, gotta concentrate. Can't can't mess up. You can do this. You can do this, method. All right. I've no no. I missed one. Now I have connected all the points that be, can be connected. In this case, it looks like it would be spiraling in the uh, uh, counterclockwise direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from counterclockwise all the way around this, and I'm going to start what would be the next line, and I'm kind of, so I, I always turn it so that I'm as close to the other lines as possible. So I've now extended every one of those other lines, and now it's time to, to start wrapping. So in, the, in this case, because we were headed the counterclockwise direction, I draw over and down till I hit over and down. Over, oh, this one's gonna have, no, stop. All right, around and bend back. Round and bend back. Oh, the loop all the way. Loop all the way around and bend back. And yeah, as long as I started in the right direction, I'm, I'm usually pretty safe to not mess up from that point. And what I will say is this would work for any size of grid. And boy, are those some really neat patterns. And of course, this was painting with the scientists. So we should spend some time coloring these in. And I, I didn't color any in on the previous page. I don't, I don't know if we'll have time to go back and do that. But let, 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 let's try this. So I want you to notice something interesting, because there, there's some really cool math hidden here. Um, I'll go, go ahead and use blue. I'm just going to start coloring, and I'm going to follow along the line, and I'm going to see where it takes me. So on the, this one on the left, la, 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 la. filling it in. Oh, jumps underneath there. Oh, it goes under. Oops. I guess it's going under, but it's also going over. It, it, yeah, pretty, every segment goes both under something and over something. Ooh, wrapped back around onto ourselves here. Just following it along. Okay, still following the same strand. Keeps keeps changing direction on me. We go up and oh, we're gonna just do the entire thing in one color. Huh, okay, a little unsatisfactory that it all ended up being just one color. Um, 
for those of you who are good at 3D shading and things, you, you can really make these look pretty cool. All right, we're, we're, let's try this other one. N new color. We're going to try this. I'm just going to start shading here. Shade one segment. Shade the next one. Next one. And, oh. okay, look at this. We got one loop there. Ooh, let's let's move to a new color now. All right. It's next region over. And the next region over. Oh ho. Something kind of cool is happening here. That was a full loop. All right. Can I try a new color? See where this one takes us. Oops. Ah. We just finished yet another loop and then one final one here. And wow, what we're seeing is on this particular Celtic knot, there were actually four different strands involved. Whereas the other one, there were only, there's only one strand involved. It was just one long piece that matched up together. And what I want to ask you guys is, what the heck? Why is it different? Or is there some way of predicting whether it would be different? Huh. Why? Yes, there is. If you guys were watching our quarantine episode from last week, one of the math problems I gave you guys involved... This Minecraft company that was just in charge of designing the bottoms of pools. So that diagonal designs is what they were called. And they would travel up, and then the diagonal would bounce, and they would get this weird bouncing pattern, and it would follow where it went. And my question was, how can you tell whether the diagonal will actually hit every square, in which case the diagonal design is gone because it's part of everything, or when the di diagonal design will not cover the whole floor. And it turned out that if the side lengths were relatively prime, meaning they, they shared no common factors other than one, then that line would hit, go everywhere. And that's what we have going on here. If you counted the number of points here, we had one, two, three, four by one, two, three. So this knot started out as a four by three grid uh, along the outside. Well, four and three, don't have any common factors. And what that means is that this overall knot is just going to be one piece. So in, in, as a matter of fact, what you should do is find the greatest common factor. So three and four, the greatest common factor is one. Therefore, it's just going to be one strand. Whereas here, I did a four by four grid. Well, since it was four by four, what's the common factor between four and four? Well, four is the common factor. So how many colors did it take? It just took four colors to color that entire knot. So will that work every time? Yes, it will. And it's, it's really just that, that pool the diagonal design problem sh showing up here uh, with, with different starting spots. I guess we started all those diagonal designs in one corner. But yeah, the exact same map is coming into play right here. So these Celtic knots, can be done of any size, and as long as you have enough dots, you can do them. That this exact pattern will, will hold, and you can also figure out the number of distinct strands you will need just by yeah, noting the, the two side lengths of the original diagonal square and finding their greatest common factor. Pretty awesome. Indeed. Good good, job, good, good, good times. So, uh, yeah, we. We didn't get a chance to color these other ones, but yeah, there's some really fun patterns there that, that would also be worth your time to, to go back and color. So thank you very much for joining me today and for letting me share some <laughs> math doodle art. You brought a light in here, but then you never turned it on. I did. I brought that in. I moved the couch and everything. Why, why would I Why would I remember to turn on the light? Well, th thank you for, for being here. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and that you 
do some more exploration on your own and that you share those drawings with the rest of us. Take care.